live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering IBM World of Watson 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Free cake, it usually okay, works. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in the Mandalay Bay at the Wild World of Watson. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and expect the signal of noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Harry Green, who's the general manager of Watson's Internet of Things, Cognitive Engagement and Commerce and Education for IBM. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I know you have to run, we have a very short time, but I want to jump right into it. The buzz around the keynote around Watson and IoT has been fantastic. Just some stats that were just quoted before we came on. Uh, 100 million impressions, social impressions, in terms of buzz and conversational uh, activity around Watson IoT, and 50 million on education. And so how does that connect? And, I mean, and 200 million around cognitive solutions. The art is formerly known as commerce. <laughs> so, co so cognitive is resonating as not just being um, more than a digital assistant. There's a, there's, a, there's a vibe going on, a new genre of application. What, what's happening? Why, how does this work? And well, how does I education think, get in there? So I think uh, each one of them is slightly different. So the Internet of Things is you know, the fourth wave of digitization. It's a movement. And our aim is to kind of lead that movement. And you know, we talked yesterday about our platform, about our applications, live client outcomes. That's what I think has made it exciting. Clients talking about Reader, their, their, their amazing new uh, whiteboard, Schaeffler, uh, the largest ball bearing manufacturer in the world, talking about Kierkegaard and self-determining ball bearings. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so very, very exciting client outcomes that people can relate to. Uh, in cognitive solutions, I think the range of, uh, whether it's HR, um, uh, supply chain, retail, how cognitive can be applied to different roles and different professions seems to have resonated. As I was looking at the social impressions last night, the sort of themes of, ah, yeah, I could see how we could use this in our contact center. So really resonating with a range of people, not just CTOs. And then of course education. You know, IBM has such a history of doing great stuff in the world that yeah. our, our three main areas around cognitive uh, capabilities in education. The first we announced with Sesame Street to try and improve the capabilities of preschool children, uh, predominantly around vocabulary. <coughs> then uh, last week, as you've already mentioned, the big announcement around uh, uh, Apple, and yesterday on stage we had uh, the superintendent, I think she's the deputy superintendent, but not for long I think, <laughs> the deputy superintendent of Capel showing and demoing how she is using the Watson cognitive capability inside a classroom, connecting uh, uh, children, finding out a bit more, making real-time inputs. It's like having 50 teachers in the class. And then the, the final one on education uh, 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 is around Pearson that we announced yesterday. Now Pearson, you know, has millions of students, is one of the leaders, and they have a digital platform but we are embedding Watson within it. So students yeah. can talk to Watson. You know, it's amazing. I, I, I love, first of all, you have a background in kind of transformation. It's kind of a buzzword, digital transformation. Everyone's talking about it, but what you're talking about, you mentioned profession, and you mentioned some of these interest areas. It's not just the industry application anymore. The world's changed because it's an individual focus. Watson's showing value to individuals, whether that's an, uh, a profession, not just industry solutions, it's actually hitting the individual. What's yeah. the transformation happening in this area? Because this well, is think, changing the dynamics. I think that you're exactly right. I think there are a couple of themes. First of all, certainly from an Internet of Things perspective, and I think the cognitive platform that IBM is, is ushering in this new era, really takes IT uh, out from just the back office and being you know, with CIOs and CTOs. I am deluged. Uh, and spending time with clients who are chief innovation officers, you know, CEOs, thinking about the way that this information can help them design better, 
manufacture better or create new products and services. So I think it's an entire movement. And you're right, yesterday, the feedback that we were getting, HR professionals, supply chain professionals, and we had those people on the stage talking about the improvements using Watson. It's client outcomes. The thing that struck me, and we had the uh, Chief Digital Officer of, of Schaeffler on yesterday. Is Gerhard. The, is, is the, yeah, Gerhard, is the pace. So he said they really just started this journey two years ago. Yeah. And now they're, virtually their vision is the entire product line is going to be instrumented. Yeah. So, um, and we had Chief Digital Officer of Staples on. So we have very different kind of use yeah. cases. So what are you seeing out there in terms of the pace of development and the speed at which people are implementing? I, I think it's about companies deciding, are they going to be disrupted or are they dis the disruptors? And I don't think this is about size of business. Uh, I think you know we are involved with many startups, many medium-sized companies. But if you take yeah. a Schaeffler, they've already they already gather a huge amount of structured data. Now they're gathering unstructured data uh, and really creating these new products. And the movement is there. You know, if you're yeah. not, if you don't have an Internet of Things and a manufacturing 4.0 strategy, and you're in these key markets, what are you doing? But don't you think the incumbents have a real advantage here? In other words. They have the systems in place. They've got, in concept anyway, the data. If they act, they should be able to preserve and extend their franchises, should I, they not? I think this is open to all companies. I, I, I would cite a couple of great startups. I mean, Oli, our, our cognitive yeah. talking car that was featured, where you know this is a 3D printed, uh, driverless little bus, and we put Watson in, and now it talks, mm -hmm. and now it's a hit in every <laughs> state it's in. Bluebell, a lovely startup in the UK, it is a bicycle bell, but it gathers from all of the sensors information about road traffic, health, et cetera. It's so amazing. So I think it's more yeah. a state of mind yeah. as to do you want to improve your design and have con consumers more involved in that, improve your yeah. manufacturing, or create brand new products uh, 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 for your clients. I want to ask you a question, a personal question, because last week we were at the Grace Hopper Women in Celebration of Computing by Anita Borg, and our third year at theCUBE, go to uh, youtube.com, so SiliconANGLE, all the videos are up there. Interesting new trend, the youth, the young people coming into the market, the women, um, uh, and it wasn't about, certainly there's a lot more work to do with women in, in tech and IT, but the, and that's important, and continue to focus on that, but a new thing came out of that, and Jeannie gave a keynote there, and said, don't ever let anyone define you. And the other thing that came out of Grace Hopper was that the software that needs to be written for 50% of the population is women, so you're seeing a much more um, prominent role for women in design, creative, software, and IT, and the tooling now is changing the process. Yeah. So you have a leadership background. How would you talk about that, and what's your vision around how to uh, set the table, if you will, yeah. for this next generation of women so in I, IT. I think there are three sets of responsibilities and having someone like Ginny Rometty lead this organization. You know, if you put in uh, uh, tech, uh, CEO, chairman, or entrepreneur, what comes up are a lot of male faces. Yeah. So we've got <laughs> fantastic leadership through this transformation. But I think there are three responsibilities. The first is on us as women to have the skills that the world needs, to retrain if that's required, to have the skills that people need. We heard yesterday in the keynote, do something that can't be you know, downloaded uh, uh, as an app. So as women, we need to make sure we have those skills. Secondly, companies need to have the programs and initiatives that ensure that regardless of your age, sex, color, creed, sexuality, or physical ability, that if you are good, you will get on. And I think at IBM, we absolutely have that. And then the third responsibility is for shareholders. In Europe, the evidence is uh, irrefutable that companies that have uh, a truly reflective, diverse board perform better. They look more like their markets, their clients, their customers. And so I think it's a three-level responsibility. And the came up yesterday, the, the um, uh, Bob Lord was on, and we're talking about his new job, and one of the things we talked about is the consumer experience is now coming to B2B, and that is cars, it's connected devices. IOT is now a digital software paradigm, and it's not a male thing, it's everybody. So more importantly, the software, and the, it has to be designed Absolutely. properly. I, I think in part, that's why I was asked to come and take the IOT job, because IOT is about B, 
to B to C yeah. and how we design and create for the consumer and how we think about the consumer within that. We have this amazing new center, uh, the uh, uh, IoT, mm -hmm. IBM center, global center for our world in Munich and you know, it was designed by our millennials in terms of they're the people, they're the greatest yeah. minds working on it. An entirely diverse group of people who are just breaking through in their thinking uh, and their ideas. I wish we had more time. I know you got to go to another uh, client appointment. But I want to give you the final word and get your thoughts. For the folks watching, what's the big aha from this Watson event? Because, you know, Jeff ML, the CEO of GE, said last week on stage, that, he, that GE went to bed last night as an industrial company and woke up this morning as a software business. This seems to be the thread in IoT. Watson gives a humanization concept of value. What's the big takeaway from this conference that you'd like to share with folks? What, why is the, what's oh, all the I, hubbub I, about? I think the hubbub is about, this is only the second world of Watson. Uh, and last uh, time we had one, I think it was a couple of thousand people. You know, we have nearly 20,000 people, many of them clients, sharing how at the start of this cognitive era, they are using Watson and IBM to either design better, manufacture better, or create new products and services. And the array of roles and skills and capabilities that are here, that gives it an energy and an excitement yeah. that whether it's education, whether it's IoT, whether it's in HR, supply chain, retail, that this has meaning and that this can generate real value and amazing outcomes, not just for society, but for business. And for individuals, too. The individuals are getting hit with this Absolutely. value. Absolutely, yeah. Harriet, thanks so much for coming on Cube. Appreciate it, Harriet. General Manager, Harriet Green, General Manager, the Watson Internet of Things, Cognitive Engagement, and Education for IBM. Thanks for taking the time. It's a great pleasure. I'm Thank John you. Furrier with Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE here, live at the Mandalay Bay for IBM World of Watson. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Okay.